Okay, hello everybody. I'm just going to try and do a quick summary of all we did from chapter 2 to chapter 3 for the biology test. And uh, it all starts here on page uh, 36 where we're talking about the different reasons why cells would divide. So here we've got growth, uh, repair, and um, reproduction. And these are the three main reasons why there would be, you know, cells would divide in the first place. And then we just kind of went over, you know, the basic uh, sort of parts of the cell, you know, with all their, uh, the, the, the parts we learned last year, essentially. And, you know, just to really kind of help us get ready to be able to look at DNA and how it might be structured, but also just to sort of get, prepare us for when the cells will divide and sort of, so we're more interested in the, the parts that deal with cell division. And that would be the nucleus, the chromosomes, the uh, centrioles in uh, animal cells. And centrioles are really the structures that kind of look like this right here and uh, off to the side of a, a nucleus. Okay, so let's see now what else we have here. So we've got um, the structure of the DNA, the nucleotide, which is this part. There's the uh, phosphate, sugar, and nitrogenous base. And there's actually four different kinds of nitrogenous bases. There's, you know, uh, you know, you might say that this is um, cytosine, and then we've got guanine, and then we've got, you know, thymine, and then we've got adenine. And so, I mean, that's this picture, but that's not exactly how they look like in real life. Um, a always goes with T, and T, um, G always goes with C, as you can see right here. So if you had one side of the strand, you could easily find the other side. Now the genetic code relates to how uh, eventually proteins are formed, and amino acids are, are the building blocks of proteins. And so when uh, protein synthesis happens, that's the creation of protein, essentially what happens is um, a copy is made of the DNA. So, um, you know, when genes uh, within, you know, a strand of DNA uh, make a copy, they call it RNA at this point. And then RNA is able to leave the nucleus and go out and uh, it's only one stranded and it goes out and attaches uh, to a ribosome in the cytoplasm. And that ribosome then essentially reads the instructions of the RNA and assembles the appropriate amino acids. So as, you know, this piece of RNA, which is red in this picture, uh, runs through the ribosome, which is green in this picture, the yellow amino acids are put into place and eventually a protein is created. And that's called protein synthesis. These are different kinds of proteins that we have in our body, but we're not going to be tested on this. Okay, so essentially then we went on to the cell cycle. The cell cycle has uh, made, the main parts are, you know, we've got mitosis and interphase is basically all the way, 90% of the cell's life is interphase. But interphase can be subdivided into a G1, an S, and a G2. G1 and G2, we didn't really talk about very much, but the cell's just going on living a life as usual. But the duplication of chromosomes happens in the S phase, and the S phase is kind of like for, uh, S might stand for synthesis, and that's the, where the duplication of, of uh, chromosomes happens. And a chromosome will go from looking like one strand to something that looks like this, two strands. Okay, so, but anyways, well, when uh, the parent cell in mitosis divides, it, it becomes two daughter cells that are a little bit smaller a lot of times, but the genetic uh, makeup of those two daughter cells is exactly the same as the parent cell. It's basically cloning. This always happens, or this happens in our body 99.9% .9 of the time. Essentially, we've got, you know, interphase here, prophase, uh, the chromosomes begin to get smaller and thicker. They uh, start to move, you know, the, the nuclear membrane disappears and they start to move towards the center of the cell. The centrioles also, which are the two opposite sides of the cell, they're uh, creating spindle fibers and attaching to the chromosomes. And they actually help to move the chromosomes into place. Then comes along my, uh, metaphase, that's where the chromosomes line up in the middle. 
And then anaphase is when the chromosomes uh, split apart. And sister chromatids, which basically, if you were to look at this, sister chromatids are the two um, paired, you know, you know, halves of the of the whole chromosome. But um, they they break apart, and uh, then a nuclear membrane forms around that. Uh, each of those new sets of chromosomes. And as you notice, there's four chromosomes to begin with over here. And you end up with four chromosomes in, in each of the cells. So what's uh, convenient about that is that uh, you never lose uh, numbers, you know, chromosome number stays the same throughout uh, each division. And then uh, cytokinesis kind of is, is a part of uh, the telophase. So uh, it's really just talking about the cell, the rest of the cell, where there's you know mitochondria and ribosomes and the cytoplasm, all the rest of it, they divide as well as you know the chromosomes. Uh, so when it talks about the chromosomes, we're talking really about all these phases: the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. That's in reference to these, what's happening to the chromosomes. But with everything else, they call that cytokinesis. Plant cells divide in a slightly different way. They have a cell wall that builds up in the middle, um, and, and then that divides. We skip this section on uh, changes to DNA and uh, cancer and mutations and what, what causes cancer. Uh, it's good stuff, but we just skipped over it. Okay, then we had binary fission. Okay, sorry. Um, asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is where, you know, it's it, microorganisms and small organisms and very low organisms can um, divide in very much the same way that uh, mitosis happens. Very much the same way. Uh, but uh, these, this time, it's, you know, a whole organism, like one, one whole organism becomes two, essentially. And uh, when we have something where two equal halves are created out of one, and that's called binary fission. That's bacteria, we call it, uh, we also see that in amoebas, and uh, sometimes in um, things like um, paramecium. Okay. And... Uh, I see that, uh, you know, we're talking about different kinds of organisms, red tide and stuff like that. And these things can actually divide really quickly, uh, up to 20 minutes. It doesn't, it doesn't take very long. Budding, that happens with, you know, uh, things like yeast and, uh, you know, the hydra, which is this picture right here. And um, jellyfish and sea anemones. And uh, this, this happens in them. Vegetative reproduction. Oh, and budding basically is just you got a little thing off to the side and it breaks off and becomes its own. Vegetative reproduction in a very similar way to bud, you know, budding, where you've got plants. It's more to do with plants as opposed to, you know, budding is to do with more animal-like organisms. But with plants, uh, we got a runner that starts to grow a little part of the plant down here, and then the runner, you know, basically disintegrates and eventually that plant becomes its own. Um, its own plant and uh, so you know crocuses and shoots coming from a potato tuber you know okay then fragmentation we talked about that quite a few times that's uh, basically where you know you have a starfish if you cut it then basically that can make two starfish you can cut things in different ways and things will grow two heads and and you know two two different uh, organisms and this here is called fragmentation and uh, okay, so then then our last thing is uh, spore formation. That's where you know uh, spores uh, are created and distributed, and they're basically all little, little, very very small, airborne spores, you know, that can go to different places and uh, grow things like algae and mushrooms and puffballs and molds and things, you know, bread mold essentially. If you were to, if you were to look at it microscopically, it would look like this. And the advantages to asexual reproduction is that only one parent is needed. Um, you know, a single organism can produce a lot of offspring. And, but the only problem is, is that the offspring are all genetically identical, so you don't really see any variation. Then that came to the end of this uh, section, and uh, we then moved on to chapter three. And here we began to took, take a look a little bit at. Uh, different terminology. Somatic cells, by the way, is body cells. That's like just another name for body cells. And that's things that, you know, where you would see mitosis. But uh, sex cells, which are uh, another name for that is gametes, they're not 
uh, produced by mitosis. They are actually the sperm and egg, sperm being male and the egg being female. They're produced by meiosis, which is basically this whole process. So the, the sperm and the eggs would be the end products of meiosis, which is two divisions resulting in four um, cells at the end. And actually, there's, the two divisions have very similar names. So you have a prophase through telophase uh, in meiosis one, and they a lot of times will have a Roman numeral one after each one of these words. And then, again, a second round of that in meiosis two, where you see prophase, metaphase, uh, or sorry, prophase, or kind of skipped prophase, it seems like right here. But anyways, we have a metaphase, anaphase, where they break apart, telophase, where they start to form a membrane around the new chromosomes, and then the end. But you'll notice that we started with four chromosomes, and you end up with two in this picture. And that's the way it is with all, you know, uh, things that undergo meiosis. You know, in fact, it goes with four here, and right after the first division is when you even end, end up with the two chromosomes. The half, half of the normal amount of chromosome material. Whereas in my, mitosis, you actually get the same, four and four. Here it's four and two. And so if you're a human, this, are, this would be 46 over here, and then you'd see 23 here. And you'd see 23 over here as well. So, but uh, once you have the sperm, and then if you say then have that uh, eventually comes into contact with eggs, the 23 that would be in the sperm, and the 23 that if, if this all happened again in a female, you'd have them, the eggs, you'd have 23 and 23. Well, they would come together and that would be fertilized. A fertilized egg would produce, have 46 again. I'm getting a bit of ahead of myself, but uh, here we see talk about uh, haploid and diploid. Haploid is when you have only one set of chromosomes, that's like the 23. And diploid is when you have two whole sets of chromosomes, and that's uh, like the 46. And diploid is oftentimes symbolized as 2n, and haploid is symbolized as just n. Uh, here's a, um, just talk about homologous chromosomes. When, when you're talking about a diploid chrom um, organism, you have uh, two of each of the chromosomes, and they're called homologous chromosomes. Uh, when they're side by side, you see that they're really quite the same, and they have similar genes in the same locations. And they even have the same length. Um, and here's uh, of a fruit fly. It started with, eight, started with eight, and then divides. Okay, here we go. It, starts, it divides into, you have only four now. That's one N, one set of chromosomes. And at the very end, one, one set again. So here we're talking about meiosis, clearly. Whereas, uh, let's see if we got, went to the end here. Again, 28 goes to 14. Here we're talking about meiosis again. And uh, so, yeah. So I guess then we went on to a whole sort of uh, fertilization process. The sperm and egg became a zygote. That's 2N, that's a new individual. And once that begins to start dividing, that again goes back into mitosis. That's where uh, the, the, that's the whole growth part of it, you know, growth, repair, and reproduction. Well, the zygote primarily is going to be engaged in growth. And um, well, this all produces diversity. You know, the idea when you have higher level organisms, the sperm and egg come together, that's basically shuffling the deck and you have a whole new sort of combination of, of chromosomes in that new zygote, and uh, that causes a lot of diversity. And that's why you see when brothers, they don't even look the same really hardly. Well, they look sort of the same, but um, it's because uh, there's a mix-up of the genetic material. And it didn't, we didn't go over these terms here, and uh, we didn't go over that term, so we don't have to really worry about those terms. But we did maybe compare both sexual and asexual reproduction. So number of parents in the sexual reproduction is two, and the offspring are few. Uh, a lot of times, like, because you only have, people only have usually two or three or four kids. A uh, variety of offspring is genetically different, and uh, usually very slow, you know, to, to um, create a baby. It takes nine, nine months. And, uh, yeah. Okay, and so then we didn't even worry about anything after 3.2. So basically, that's the gist of the whole of what we did in biology, and so I hopefully that uh, you um, you got a lot out of that, and uh, you know hopefully we can um, have a great test on Friday. And by the way, I just wanted to point this out here. 
mitosis, you can see here, if this was asked, this would become 32 and 32. And in meiosis, this would become 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. In all of the case down here, this would be all 16s. Okay. And uh, here's meiosis again. Okay, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.